Hi class, this is going to be my introduction to the skeletal system. Have your worksheets out. We probably won't get too far with this first video. Um, but have your worksheets out. Have some colored pencils out. A blank sheet of paper. I'd like you to draw something while we're working on this. And have your lecture notes out too, so you can kind of read along. I'll, hopefully I'll be following those lecture notes too. So number one, of all the systems, I'm not sure why, but the more I do the skeletal system, the more I love it. It's not like it's so complex, but bones, once you have access to real bones, and in the classroom, we have real bones. You pick up that bone. It has nothing to hide. It shows you everything. All those lumps and bumps and holes. It's telling you a life story. I love bones. I love skeletons. And what you'll find after we're dead and gone, what lives on are our bones. So, and there's some great artists that do um, anatomy art, and I just collect all of them. I love these skeleton drawings. So, that's one thing I wish you were in the classroom for, for bones, more than anything. I wish you can pick up the bone, turn it around, look at it, feel it. But this is going to be hard teaching bones remotely, but we'll do our best. So the skeletal system, a new root word for you, osteo. If you think, see any word, O-S-T-E-O, that means bone. So if you hear the word osteoporosis, basically this is just saying a porous bone, osteoarthritis. It's where our joints t come together. They're having inflammation. Um, so those are two new words that you need to know. The skeletal system, it's about 20% of our body weight and consists of bones, cartilages, and ligaments. Now, the functions of the skeletal system, and this is something, I, I put a box around these things. This just kind of mean, means either you should be writing this down in a note, taking notes, or putting it down in a note card so you're not just listening to me blab away, you can actually write it down and maybe if you have it on index card you can flip through it because you can guarantee you're going to have to know the functions of the skeletal system. So number one, this one you already know, protects internal organs. Remember your body cavities? So cranial cavity protects the brain, the vertebral ca cavity protects the spinal cord, thoracic cavity, the lungs and the heart, and the pelvic ca cavity, the bones of the pelvis, protecting the, the bladder and in the female, the uterus. This one you probably never think of, energy storage. In adult bones, we're going to store adipose in our bones. and We'll show you that shortly. That's called yellow marrow. So energy storage for fat. Blood cell formation. You probably have all heard of red bone marrow. So it is in the red bone marrow that all our blood cells are formed. Hemopoiesis. Here, there's another root word. Heme. That means blood, like hematology. That would be the study of blood. Hemopoiesis. Poiesis means production of. 
So hemopoiesis production of blood. So the blood cells, we're talking about red blood cells, white blood cells, and our platelets are formed in the red marrow of bone. Storage of minerals. You probably know this. Bones store calcium and they store phosphorus. But we always think bones and calcium go together. And you will find out in physio that our bodies need calcium for almost everything. These calcium ions are going to be doing a lot. So we're not going to be talking about calcium ions, but in physio, your body needs calcium to perform some vital functions. So we're storing calcium and phosphorus in our bones. Number five, movement of the body. Well, the skeletal system by itself is not moving our body, but the skeletal muscles that are attached to our bones, it's those muscles that are going to be contracting and moving the bones. So it is those bones that are moving when the muscles contract. Remember, muscles attached to bones by tendons. And support. Bones provide the framework that supports the weight of your body. Just like a house, the first thing you do is you're building out the framework. Everything else is going to be attached to it. So, the way they classify bones is by shape. Now, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five different classifications of bones by their shape. First is going to be long bones. Makes sense. They're longer than they are wide and they have two distinct ends. Most of the bones in your arms and legs are long bones. So the humerus of the upper arm, the radius and the ulna, and all your digits, your fingers, aka phalanges, those are all long bones. The femur, the tibia, and the fibia of your leg and all of the toes, toe phalanges, those are all long bones. Now, the next one is short bones. Now, short bones are more cuboidal in shape, and you're going to find short bones in the carpal and tarsal bones. Carpal means wrist. So here are the carpal bones, and you're going to be learning these carpal, some of these carpal bones. These are the carpal bones. These are short bones. These are the tarsal bones, the ankle bones. These are short bones. And I want to show you these, these bones of your fingers and toes. These are all long bones. Even these tiny ones at the, the tips of your fingers, these are still long bones. Same thing with the tip of your toes. These tiny bones, they're still long bones. Then we get to these bones we call flat bones. Flat bones, they parallel the surface of the body and they have a protective function. So a lot of students will think, well, a rib, if you look at a rib, is that not a long bone? No. This is parallel. This is parallel, paralleling, does that even make sense? Paralleling the surface of the body and it has a protective function. That is the ribs, of course the sternum. Then we have the scapula back in here. That you'll, you'll be learning the scapula. It's a weird looking bone. Um, and then the cranial bones. Now these these cranial bones are kind of flat and they are protecting obviously the brain. Then we come to irregular bones. They are just weird in shape and you have lots of them. 
the vertebral column, all the vertebrae of the vertebral column, those are all irregular bones, very strange shaped. There's going to be some bones of the skull that are very strange looking. Here is one of them that you'll be learning, the sphenoid. Here's another bo bone of the skull, the mandible. This is your jaw bone. Irregular in shape. They are just strange looking. And our last kind of bone is a sesamoid bone. They say it's shaped like a sesame seed. Now these bones are embedded in tendons. So the biggest one is going to be the patella, the kneecap. This is going to be embedded in tendons. So it is not connected to another bone. It is embedded in a tendon. And when the muscles, this is going to be a quadriceps muscle, your big thigh muscle up here, when it contracts, this patella, the sesamoid bone is going to be moving up and down, up and down. And it's high, it, the, these sesamoid bones are high, helping to guide the directional movement to keep it going in a, its proper direction. So the patella is the big guy, and you also have them in your feet, in your hands. So here you can see a little sesamoid bones. Here you can see it on x-ray. These are the sesamoid bones on x-ray, and they are embedded in tendons in here. So enough about that. Now there's two types of bone tissue. Write that down. There's two types of bone tissue. Guarantee that will be somewhere on a quiz or a test. What are the, the two types of bone tissue? Compact bone, aka cortical bone, or dense bone. This is the outer protective layer of bone. When you see a bone, you are looking at compact bone. So I brought this bone in. Here is the femur. It's the big bone of your thigh. What you are seeing when you are looking at an intact bone that isn't broken in some way this is all compact bone, but it is not very thick. So when we cut this femur, we're going to do a frontal cut right here, and you're going to expose the inside of the bone. Here is the compact bone. That's the thickness of the compact bone here on this part of the bone. Once it gets to the this part of the bone, the compact bone is still there, but it becomes very thin up here. But the outline of the bone is all compact bone. Deep to the compact bone is going to be spongy bone. So spongy bone, this is, it's a porous honeycomb look. Here it is up close. This is spongy bone up close. They call it trabeculae bone. That's another name for it. So spongy bone deep to the compact bone. Now, first we're going to have some terms we got to go through. Um, and we're going to talk about a typical long bone and how we describe a typical long bone. So this is on the first page of your worksheet. So here's our femur again. And we're going to have two ends to long bones. Long bones have distinct ends to them. They look different. Each of the ends look different. This is going to be the proximal end. So here's our femur over here. This is the proximal end, closer to the torso. And this is our distal end. So distal end and proximal end. We are calling 
these end segments of this long bone an epiphysis, EPI on top of, right, epiphysis. These are the end segments. So this will be the proximal epiphysis. This will be the distal epiphysis. In between the proximal and distal epiphysis will be this long part here called the diaphysis, a.k.a. the shaft. Of, that's the long section of the bone. So these are all terms you have to know. So if you want to make little cards with all these, index cards that would be great so make sure you can spell them too now there is something we're going to be talking about a, um, a little bit later when we talk about how we make bone in these the proximal and distal epiphysis you're going to have something called an epiphyseal line can't really see it very well here. This is an epiphyseal line. This is actually um, compact bone in here. When the bone was still growing, this was called an epiphyseal plate. Epiphyseal plate, aka growth plate. So when your bones are still growing, this actually is highland cartilage. We are going to use highland cartilage to form our bones. So once you stop growing that epiphyseal plate that was once filled with cartilage, highland cartilage, it's now filled with solid bone. So <clears throat> we'll talk about that a little bit later, but make sure you know epiphyseal line the bone is no longer growing. Epiphyseal plate, aka the growth plate, the bone is still growing. Now, in this long section of the bone, there is a hollow space. Hard to see here. If you're in the classroom, it would be much easier to see. I don't know if you can see it here. But this is a space. Here's our compact bone on either side of it. This space is called the medullary cavity. Medullary cavity. Remember, every anytime you hear that word cavity, you're thinking of a space. So make sure you mark those down on your worksheet. You've got that all down, and it, it's it's in this medullary cavity that we are going to have yellow marrow. That's where the adipose is going to be stored. Now, what I'd like you to do, and if you would, it would really help you. Normally in class, we draw this on the bone. We draw this on the bone. We draw this on the board. This is a typical long bone that you need to know all the parts of. So here's an outline for you. If you could just get your pencils and a blank sheet of paper and just draw something like this. It's not too hard. That is just going to be an outline of a typical long bone. And then we're going to add stuff to it. So this is showing you a bone that has been cut. So this is a frontal cut. So we are looking inside the bone, just like here. So we're kind of drawing this kind of a section of a bone. First thing you're going to put on the caps, the end caps of the bone is going to be a layer Get like a blue pencil or something, crayon, whatever. Do, do the, the end caps in blue. 
This is going to be articular cartilage. This is articular cartilage. Do it at both ends, articular cartilage on both ends. Here I drew it in. This is blue, articular cartilage. Articulate, that means where two bones come together to form a joint. Articulate, so this is articular cartilage on both ends of the bone. Because this bone is going to be articulating with the bone above it, and this bone is going to be articulating with a bone below it. So, what kind of cartilage covers the ends of long bones? This is hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage. But in this location, we are calling it articular cartilage because it's where the bones articulate. Now, once you have your articular cartilage drawn, where your articular cartilage stops, you are going to draw something that's going to go all the way around the bone from one articular cartilage to the other. That is going to be called the periosteum. Periosteum. This is all the way around the bone. Peri means around, osti means bone. Periosteum completely surrounds the bone. Obviously, it's not going in the inside of the bone, it's on the outside of the bone. So this bone here would be covered in periosteum. This is the periosteum is long since it's, it's dead, so there's it's not on this bone. Um, remember periosteum? This is going to be dense, irregular connective tissue. Remember you had perichondrium, which was surrounding cartilage. Well, periosteum surrounding the bone. It's completely surrounding the bone, except where you have articular cartilage at the ends of the bone. So far so good. So you got your articular cartilage and then right where the articular cartilage ends, periosteum begins. Add in your spongy bone. I just do little X's. A spongy bone on both sides in the uh, the proximal and distal epiphysis, put your spongy bone in there. In the middle of the diaphysis, this long part of the bone, is a space. Remember, this is the medullary cavity. So just draw kind of like a, a space in there medullary cavity. It's going to be filled with yellow marrow adipose, but we call it yellow marrow. And in the proximal epiphysis of the humerus and femur in adult, you're going to have red marrow. So this is where the red marrow is going to be in adults different than in kids. Kids have red marrow everywhere. Adults limited, but it's going to be in the proximal epiphysis of your humerus and your femur. Let's see, did we red marrow, yellow marrow, spongy bone, compact bone, periosteum, endosteum. Periosteum's on the outside, endosteum is lined. So the, the periosteum is attached to the compact bone. The endosteum is attached to the compact bone, but on the inside of the bone. Articular cartilage, we've got that. 
So everything should be labeled there. Now, red marrow, where do we find it? It's going to be in the skull. It's going to be in the sternum, in the ribs, the proximal ends of the humerus, and here's the femur. And it's going to be in the, the bodies of the vertebra, our vertebrae and in the crest of the hip bone up in here. Now, you've all heard of bone marrow transplants, right? So when they are retrieving bone marrow from someone that's stoning it, they are sticking a huge, huge needle into the bone to suck out the bone marrow. And it comes out like a slurry. So it's just like a red sl slurry that you'd get at 7-Eleven. That's what it kind of looks like. But where do they harvest bone marrow. You're not going to be sticking a huge needle in the sternum. Why? Because you could go through the sternum and hit the heart. Same thing with the ribs. You're not going to go through these thin ribs and puncture the wound. Um, definitely not going to go through the skull. The the vertebrae, you're not going to go there. The the bo the bo um, bodies of the vertebrae, they're for facing inside of you. You'd have to go through the abdomen and remove all the abdominal organs to get to them. So they go through the iliac crest, the hip bone. You should all be able to feel that iliac crest. That is where they're going to be sticking that big needle when they do um, harvest that bone marrow for bone marrow transplants. So hemo, hematopoiesis, the formation of red, of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Now, on your worksheet, too, you have this picture. So here is a dry humerus. This is a real bone, but obviously the cartilage is gone. The periosteum is gone. What is left is just the hard part of the bone. So we got our spongy, bo spongy bone inside and our cortical bone on the outside. So the periosteum, which they are showing you here, they are pulling the periosteum off here. And you see these little white things here, right here. So here's your periosteum. These little things are called Sharpie fibers. These are collagen fibers that are anchoring the periosteum to the compact bone. So it's kind of like they're stapling this periosteum to the compact bone. Very, very important that these are strong attachments because you're going to find out that it is the periosteum that muscle tendons are going to be inserting. They're going to be in, the muscle tendons are inserting into the periosteum. So when the muscle contracts, it is the periosteum that it is pulling. So that periosteum has to be anchored real well into that compact bone. Some of you may have seen weight, um, weightlifters, especially in Olympic, Olympic competition. They are lifting such massive amounts of weight. Their muscles are huge and strong. But the wink link is this, is this periosteum. And I'm going to I don't know if you've ever seen where they are lifting something heavy and the bone, the bone, muscle tendon actually detaches from the bone because of that, that periosteum. 
just can't hold it. Just can't hold it. Uh, I think I only have one more slide and then we're done. Oh, I, I wanted to show you this. Here's a lot of oh, a real bone. Look at all these little holes in here. These are where blood vessels from the periosteum are going to be perforating the bone. So real bones, you're going to see all these little holes. So that's why they're there. This is our last slide. We're going to be talking about periosteum has two layers. Peri, once again, means around the bone. Periosteum, around the bone. We have an outer superficial layer. This is what I would draw on the board. Here's our two, this is our periosteum. An outer superficial layer. This is on the outside of the bone. Dense irregular connective tissue. The inner layer, the second layer, it's deep to the to the um, dense irregular connective tissue. It is containing bone cells that we're going to be talking about shortly. Osteoblasts and osteoclasts. That's where some of the bone cells live. And these bone cells are right next to our compact bone. So if this is our compact bone, those bone cells are going to be right next to that compact bone. The periosteum, remember, is going to be anchored by Sharpie fibers that are coming through both layers of the periosteum. So those, um, their collagen fibers, they're coming through the periosteum and anchoring um, the periosteum to the hard bone, the compact bone. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. If you look at your worksheets, I have some other pictures for you to look at this. You need to know what Sharpie fibers, AKA perforating fibers are, what they are doing. Know that the periosteum has two layers, an outer superficial layer, dense irregular connective tissue, and an inner cellular layer that has two of our bone cells that we'll be talking about shortly. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Um, one other thing before we go. If you can eat fried chicken, get, get a drumstick. Get a drumstick. And, let's see, where's my bone? Get a drumstick. You will, number one, you will see where the muscle, the meat, is attaching to the bone. You will see the articular cartilage, and you can easily pull that off, the articular cartilage. You will see the red marrow. Some people like to suck the red marrow out of bones but you're going to easily see that red marrow and you will see the periosteum. If you have fried chicken, you're going to be left with this glistening mem membrane surrounding the bone and you will see it. That is the periosteum. So look at it. You'll never forget what it looks like. Same thing with the articular cartilage. So I think that's it for this video and next we're going to go on to the histology of bone.